In today's video, we are going to try and give you guys a better idea of exactly what is going on with these top-level Yanagizawa saxophones, in particular the solid silver range. And to help me through this process, we are joined by our special guest, Mr. Snake Davis here. And it's just absolutely great to see you again, Snake. First of all, thank you so much for coming down, spending this time with us, doing these demos with us, and having this chat, which we're about to have right now. My very great pleasure, Jim. It's so good to be back in the temple. Fantastic. So the main point of the video today, we're gonna to divide it into two or three parts, but chiefly what I want to concentrate on is actually doing a comparison um, between a couple of the chief solid silver Yanagizawa saxophones in the range, um, namely the TWO32, which is, yep, it's on my knee right here. I couldn't quite tell because the light is gleaming away on the instrument. They both so checking the, uh... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Snake here has the TWO37. So we're going to show some clips of Snake playing these two, sort of A-B testing, as it were, and just gather Snake's thoughts on, on what he feels the differences are, if any, as it were, talk a little bit, geek a little bit about uh, the construction of the instruments. And beyond that, I'm going to ask Snake a few questions on, well, a little birdie tells me that Snake has an online teaching course that he may like to share with us some details yep. on a bit later on. And there's also a little bit bit of a surprise for you as well. When Snake came in earlier today, he came in with his own saxophone, which is a really beautiful top-end Yanagizawa saxophone, but more on that later. So to start things, let's talk about the, the top-end Yanagizawa saxophone. There's much intrigue in these instruments in general, I would say, in the sense that, uh, you know, Yanagizawa is so well known throughout throughout the globe as uh, in the saxophone community. Um, but maybe there's a sort of fear factor when it comes to the sterling silver instruments. Well, for a start, they are so expensive and uh, possibly that puts people off. But at the same time, people are intrigued by these instruments um, because they just, well, for a start, they just look absolutely beautiful. So I say gleaming away. They do, uh, it's amazing. As, as they're just sitting here. And I just thought it'd be useful for you guys, hopefully, to just give you a little bit more of an insight into how they sound, how they feel in a player's hands. Um, so, so yeah, let's, let's get into this. Uh, you were playing them for us earlier. What were your immediate impressions of the two instruments and how they compared with one another? Well, f first thing to say for me is I, I walked in here thinking, what if I can't tell any difference at all? What am I going to do? Am I going to invent something? So I was relieved to find that I, I do feel and hear um, a, a difference between them. Um, now, if I start with the 32, I played it for a while, loved it, felt great, felt wonderful. And then I moved to the, uh, the 37, this one, the all silver. And I was really quite aware of um, a little bit more brightness, mm. a little bit more cut, a tiny bit more zing at the top end. And also, you know, this, it gets, as you well know, it gets so hard to describe these, these feelings. They're so subjective in a way. But what I sensed and felt, and it mm. brought me back to the very first time I played a solid silver Yanagasal, which was the curved soprano. I moved from all bronze to all silver. And I felt the same thing, which is a kind of breadth, a width. And I've come up with an expression for it. I call it the room filling factor. Ah, that's interesting. <laughs> and it, it is, it's like a funnel thing that, yeah. to, to my mind, is my best attempt to describe it, it goes from that to, to that, yeah. just a little bit more. And, and then, you know, I've been down the back room for quite a few hours. Now. Yeah, <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's fine, yeah. it's great to hear you. <laughs> and the other thing that, that I felt is that I could push this one, the all silver one, I could mm. push it just that bit harder. Mm-hmm. 
But I must stress, and, and you, I'm sure you'll agree, you'll have sensed these, these differences, they're so slight. Because mm. all the instruments are totally professional, wonderful instruments, and we're, we're at the top end. The differences get smaller, but I was glad that I could discern differences. Mm. And that is exactly what I felt when I was A, being the two sopranos, mm. which is 12, 15 years ago now. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, I, and I wonder if it's partly that that's the bronze body on the mm. 32. Some people are going to go, they're going to choose that because it's slightly warmer. Yes. You know. Yeah, that, that, well, exactly. I mean, it is interesting, everything you said there, but the idea that you've got a combination of metals here and, and the idea that um, we're possibly getting these different tones from the different metals, and when you meld the two together, logic would dictate that you're going to get a meld of those two different sounds. <laughs> That leads on nicely to this lovely sax which you, you brought in earlier. Perhaps we can uh, reach over and swap. do a bit of a swap. I mean, I knew you were on this saxophone um, because I'm sure you shared it in emails or it was out there on the internet or something. But I, I had forgotten it. <laughs> first time you've seen her in the flesh. <laughs> yeah, and I looked at it and I thought, what is that? And actually at first I thought, he's not on a Yanagazawa sax here. <laughs> And then you twisted it round and I saw it said Yanni on, on the bell or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I remembered, oh yeah, it's solid silver, but, but gold plated. Yep. So um, yeah, do you want to tell us the story with how this came about? What, what was, what's the story behind it? So, you know, we're, we're the same. You get, you get a bee in your bonnet, you think, right, I'm really loving the solid silver soprano. I've made the switch on the soprano. I should probably make the switch on the tenor. Yeah. You know, and that <clears throat> drove everybody crazy in your store or somebody else's store. Um, bronze, silver, bronze, silver. <laughs> I thought, right, I'm going to go for it. <clears throat> and, you know, I work closely with the company and, you know, meet up with Mr. and Mrs. Yanagasawa and I go sure. over to Japan and everything. I thought, well, let's, let's go crazy. So I thought, okay. Gold plate, solid silver. That's the way to go. But right. I don't like my instruments shiny, really. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, uh, I go for unlacquered okay, bronze. Okay, I can see where this is going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my solid silver soprano is unlacquered. It was, it was the first unlacquered one, unlacquered silver they'd ever done. I remember them saying, yeah. please clean it regularly. You know? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I love that. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's dull. So I thought, wow, okay. Can I have gold plate that's not shiny? So I said, asked them, and they said, yeah. <laughs> of course, you can do that for you, Mr. Snick. You know, when you have something that means so much to you personally, like yeah. this, it just makes you so much more passionate about what yeah. you're doing, which is your middle name, really. And it, you know, so you, when you enjoy it that much more somehow, you can just give that extra 5%. It was an indulgence, Jim, but, you know, I love it so much. It's my favourite instrument ever, and it really is beautiful, and, you know. It just helps you break hearts. Yeah, well, it, sound, it sounds fantastic. Well, you sound fantastic, but <laughs> <laughs> through this instrument, clearly. I was really interested to hear about this, this new course that you've started out 
um, with this. So it's an online teaching course. It's called Snake Academy, okay. predictably. It's an online subscription, so folks pay a, a monthly subscription, a modest 15 quid. Okay. And uh, there are a whole bunch of videos up there which are carefully structured in a logical sequence, I hope, and I'm adding to it every month. And we have a little get together on Zoom from time to time. I'm always there to answer questions. And uh, Great. it's a small community uh, thus far, but really lovely. And I've always really enjoyed teaching, but not had much time mm. because, as you know, I'm, a, I'm on the road a lot of and, and uh, playing live is number one. But um, then, guess what? Lockdown came. Yeah. So <laughs> I had more time for once yeah. to think about how to convey the knowledge that we have. Right. Because uh, I'm sure, I mean, it's, we're the same. We have this passion. The passion never dies. In fact, it just grows. Mm -hmm. And you guys are here able to advise people and steer them with the equipment and, and you know, get them going. And, and me, hopefully through this course now, I can help people realise their dream, you know. Perhaps just um, for the sake of, or the purposes of this video right now, mm. and, uh, you know, it would be remiss of me not to try and um, squeeze some, you know, snake insight out of you whilst Absolutely. you're here. Absolutely. Squeeze away, well, mate. Let, let's squeeze away. Yeah, <laughs> what, what would be um, your, say, key piece of advice, um, whether it's one piece of advice or two or three key pieces of advice that you would um, like to relay to, and we know the kind of player we're talking about, the, the, you know, the passionate developing sax player. They might have played a few years. They're perhaps a little bit stuck on their journey. You know, they've, they've got all the books. Um, but they've got that very square sound, you know, they can play all the scales and everything has that regimented, slightly concert band sound. No offence yeah. to the concert bands out there, they're a wonderful yeah. vehicle for music. But yeah, you very useful. <laughs> just get that in there. But you know what I'm talking about. And they, I absolutely they hear do. you playing, players like you, and they think, how on earth am I ever going to sound like that? And they just want to know something to get them anywhere near it. Okay, brilliant question. Um, you know, we're, we're here in, in, in the temple of, of gear, um, and s certainly I always encourage every student and every player to have the best saxophone that they can afford, uh, because, you know, it doesn't necessarily overnight make us sound better, but it, it's just so wonderful to have a great instrument to play through. Okay, <clears throat> the sax is wonderful, it's beautiful, shiny, sexy, but what's behind it. We went as far as the mouthpiece, but then you keep going, yeah. or you get, you get to the human being. And that's even more important again. It's, it's, a, it's a relationship between horn and, and human being. And generally in the early years, we focus too much on the instrument and think that we can solve problems by I mean, we've all done it, I don't well, maybe you haven't, but <clears throat> we've all bought the same mouthpiece as David Samuel yeah. and the same, the same reeds as Michael Brecker and now people do it with me yeah. and, and go, well, why don't I sound like him now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what we do with our bodies, it's so complex, it's so involved, there's thousands if not millions of little muscles working together. And so I would say to them, right, Let's go right back to the beginning and look at the way you're holding the instrument. You know, you, don't, you, you have your great posture looking forward. And <clears throat> that, 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 uh, that balance of power between this area, our core, which is supporting the air, and, and uh, making it do its job on the out breath to produce this and, and change the, the sound and the dynamics. Those muscles, they're tense uh, and they're primed, you know, it's like you get ready to be punched in the stomach. Yeah. But the rest of us needs to be light and relaxed and I teach a very relaxed embouchure mm -hmm. too. I take that to the nth degree. It's yeah. not just you've got to take a good breath and it's yeah. not just you've got to relax your arms. Um, uh, I use a, a device that I came up with called the Zen brush. And you'll like this, I hope. Okay. And so, because you, you look at our hypothetical student, and they've got a shoulder up yeah. like that, their arms are, are tense, they're gripping, and we want to get rid of all that. Mm. And just saying relax, it, it's, it's not enough. So, 
my Zen brush. It, <laughs> it's an imaginary brush which starts above your head and it sweeps down your whole body. And as it sweeps, it's searching. It's like a computer system okay. in the car. And everything that's tense, any bit of trapped energy, it releases it and it keeps going. And you do everything. You do the backs of your eyes, you do your knees, you do right down. That's down. great, I'm trying to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I use it so much and I came up with it through Snake Academy. I mean, I think I had learned this balance to some extent, but we can all get better and we'll all come. Absolutely. You and I, everybody, until we die <laughs> or lose our teeth. Uh, so it just sweeps down and even the knees and yeah. the feet. And, uh, and it, it is like magic. Um, so I bring this imaginary student right back to that relationship and to sound. Say so if we can, we search for one, sorry, one beautiful note. If we can play one beautiful note, then that's the foundation, it's like the roots of the tree and we can grow from there. Mm. So I think I'm gonna put a Zen brush on this video right that now, great. <laughs> <laughs> call it to an end and just say that this has been fascinating, insightful. I've really enjoyed catching up with you again and chatting about geeky things and, and all sorts. It's been absolutely Me too, fantastic.